everybody so uh, today the topic of discussion is something very different this is about phd the thought process about how to go about the phd and what will happen after you do the phd so i have received a lot of questions a lot of questions asking how to go about it what to do next which subject to choose which field to choose which country to choose uh can we take a break can we not take a break is it good to opt for this university is it good to go for that so all the questions will be solved by one expert that we have today with us and he is an expert in his own field his phd and he clear all our queries the thing is that it is a very long uh, session so i want all of you to be with me till the session gets over we have a surprise for you after the session gets over i announce the surprise and the other thing is that we are doing this in two parts so today we are taking the first part the second part will be uploaded soon after we receive more queries from you so keep putting the queries and let's go without further ado for the, without getting into much delay let's introduce our expert that we have we have dr ritesh oza with us and he took his time out and he has taken a lot of effort to be with us and in covid times the pandemic is going on still he connected with us on the social media through the social media platform and i'm very grateful to him he is a phd in chemistry from mumbai university he has done it in 2019 he has done his masters in bioanalytical sciences from mumbai university in 2009 and he has done his bsc in biotechnology again from mumbai university in 2007 so everybody who is connected to biotech bioanalytical sciences chemistry interested in phd please be with us and his professional experience i must say he has a vast professional experience of more than a decade across analytical instrumentations and consumable industry and the market segments that he addresses are pharmaceutical biopharmaceutical chemicals food feed environment clinical diagnostics biomedical research and academics if there would be one more it would be totally 10 so he has lot of experience and let's hand over the questions to him one by one welcome dr ritesh oja and uh, the whole stage is yours uh thank you uh, thank you dr ritu for giving me this wonderful opportunity thank for sharing my uh, experience and uh, my knowledge with the crowd here so i'll be a uh, pleasure to answer all your questions today and uh, give a satisfactory answers to all of them thank you so much i must tell you the questions would keep coming and you would have to keep answering them as and when they come i i i'm uh, surely open to it yes i'm surely open to it because i know that learning is an on- ongoing process so people will be having a lot of questions in their journey and then i am there to answer them and help them resolve their issues thank you okay. so first question to you is what are the different fields in which one can do bachelors in science okay now uh, if i have to talk about bachelors in science uh, then uh, that can be broadly classified into uh, two streams one is uh, the basic or basic sciences or rather the pure sciences uh, which are called and another one is uh, the professional ones or the applied uh, applied bsc courses so the applied ones are the ones which are more into uh, the the job oriented courses so if you talk about simple or uh, pure bsc then subjects like physics chemistry life sciences uh, then maths statistics zoology these uh, botany these are the type of subjects which come into the pure sciences or simple sciences and then when we look into applied sciences then there are uh, subjects like biotech bi- biochemistry microbiology information technology bioinformatics forensics microbiology food technology so all of these are applied uh, uh, courses because they are sort of professional job oriented courses and then after that what happens is once they are done with this uh, courses then they have opportunity to find good jobs in public as well as private sectors and after after bachelors they can go for masters in science in research area or they can all even look for a professional job oriented course so after this it is advisable that people further go for the masters as well okay so uh, the thing is that if uh, we take up a professional bi- bsc course so either we do 
a job after it or as you say it's always better to go for masters after doing pure bsc or doing a applied bsc course yes yes perfect but most of our viewers are also from a field of lab technology because we cater okay. to subjects like biochemistry pathology and microbiology so most of the viewers <laughs> most of our students are lab technologists so mm-hmm. i just have one more query that i always get can lab technologists also pursue phd after bsc medical laboratory technology or after bsc laboratory technology uh yes they can pursue uh, their phd before the, uh, before that they have to pursue their masters and for people who have done lab technology then there are many subjects in which they can do their masters so there are subjects like forens- uh, forensics microbiology pathology clinical biochemistry clinical microbiology lab technology medical uh, laboratory technology uh, medical imaging technology which talks about sonography x rays and all of the other imaging technologies which are used in hospitals so likewise once they do their msc they can further then pursue their phd in the subject of their interest so this can be like a phd in pathology for example and then after said and done like okay what next after phd they can uh find jobs in companies uh, like apollo hospitals then uh, national institute of health armed force institute of pathology then the diagnostic labs like dr lalpath labs then asian institute of medical sciences so these are the companies that recruit such people who have done their phd's uh, bef- uh after uh, their bsc mlt or bsc lt then after said said and uh, done about this then the government areas are there in which people can apply for to hospitals then there are medical colleges then people uh, can also get into research laboratories so people who are having a keen interest in r&d they can get into this type of work and then what type of positions can they uh, get in these uh, areas so they can be professors they can be pathologists they can uh, get into marketing of sales uh, of uh, these uh, different technologies which are used in the path labs or they can become a technical consultant to any company they can uh, get into research as a research associate so yes so they can do their uh, phd after doing an msc in a relevant subject somehow you have given so many options to all of us over here but uh, personally i like this option you know of a top technical consultant in a big company i have always yes. felt that this is a very sophisticated glossy position you know you get everything yes. over there yes. lots of money lots of respect so yes i like that position a lot yes so that's my personal choice oh uh, that's otherwise great. you have so many options to go through it so this brings to the next question does the field in which one does masters should be selected carefully because you know what happens is my friend is doing this and in fact yesterday only on instagram i got a question uh, a girl submitted three options she had a bi- um, biotech biochemistry and microbiology as one uh, option that she could select so mm-hmm. three options were there she wanted to go for biochem she wanted to go for biotech she wanted to go for microbiology so is this important like which master should we select does uh, it yeah. have yes have any role in doing something phd properly yes 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 it does because what happens is that whether you do a job or whether you do a phd after your uh, masters your masters become a crucial link for your next next step so you need to uh, you know carefully choose the subject because if you are planning to work in an industry immediately after the masters then then you have to choose something which is of your interest because this is a critical phase in your career so there are a couple of points that you need to uh, know like know what you want to do so basically the point here is that what type of uh, curriculum would there be okay would there be only some uh, lectures that would be there or would you get an exposure to some individual projects or would you be doing some uh, internships or some uh, vocational off campus uh, projects that you would be doing at the same time would you be doing some independent research because msc or masters in science can be done in two forms one is masters uh, msc by papers and msc by research so what is your type is something that you need to understand and then opt for that particular course then next is why you want to do it that is the most important question that you need to ask yourself as to 
why do you want to go for this particular courses because like you said that people are often tempted with many options which are that okay that this is in trend and this is the reason why that i want to you no know, choose it because they they shouldn't be choosing just a subject because uh, just to look good on their cv they are okay they have done this great course but then they should be having the intent sorry as to why they want to do so basically they they need to think of having any doubts whether uh they have about this particular course then they have to find the answers to them and at the same time they also no, need to look into the format like what sort of format uh, would there be the teaching style having said that in today's era it is always important to get as much in- information as possible so go through uh, the course descriptions student experiences are useful but then uh, you also need to find uh, something more about it you can contact the course convener or the professors out there before going in so you get a fair idea about what the course is about what is the what is the future scope of it then uh, no this way around what you will not, not just get better information but you also uh, are showing a keen interest so your people where you will be applying they will know your name beforehand so you start networking before even you apply then uh, the fourth and the most important point is just don't rely on the in- in- internet websites are useful but believe or, or or not but they are not the only way to post graduate study so most universities at times or most colleges at times they do uh, hold open days so they have the professors who are there <coughs> sorry to un- answer your queries <coughs> so then in that case you can talk to them visit them so beforehand uh, you have your prospective uh, course conveners there to give you the feel at the same time you might also get to know the professors who might teach you later on so this is how that you know you can get into a more research based and knowing that your prospective supervisor shares your interest or approach is also important because if you are planning to do an msc by research then alignment of your interest in the research areas is also really important then fifth and the most important point is the funding part so think how you will fund it so it's no secret postgraduate courses can be expensive the cost is made up of not just the fees so if, if you are planning to do your masters abroad then in that case you also need to you know take care of that funding part also and then know what you will study so you need to uh, go through the the syllabus go through the practical uh, part so the girl that asked you the question that okay there are these three options so she can go through the syllabus she can try to understand that okay what is of you no know, of interest to her what is that of her liking and what is you know she likes and then accordingly she can then pursue the course that's how it is so basically it's our interest plus it's our financial situation yes. that we have to look upon means it's not like what others are doing just look into your own self and prospect what you want how you want how you can go about it and how, do you have the money or you don't have the money in yes. both the cases it is not a problem i think as you will uh, clarify the questions further yes. even if there is yes. money or no money i think uh, we have questions further on this also so let's go ahead So the next question brings us the next question is if doing phd is important what one should think or what should be the thought process before going for the phd okay so here uh, there are uh, again couple of things that people uh, need to keep in mind so the first thing is that they need to be true to themselves and they need to define their interest early on so uh, being true means they know really why they are doing this particular course not because that someone else is doing it or it's in demand so you need to clearly understand that okay why am i doing this because this is what i am planning to you know uh, do after it and hence i am uh, doing this particular course so people uh, who are like planning to do a phd abroad for example then they need to define their interest towards the first uh, end of the first year of their masters or beginning of the the second year so that defining of interest should be done uh, pretty carefully then uh, when i say about interest it is about the subjects basically what what sort of subjects will are are they looking at and in those subjects what is a preferred research topic that they might look into 
then they need to do their research so means they need to find out uh, all the possible colleges the professors and then uh, they need to also connect to their principal in, in investigators so whether it's locally or abroad by second year they should start connecting with them then they have to look out for openings so because like uh, if people are planning to do a job they need to like these days it's better to create a profile for yourself on linkedin or any of the job portals with your profiles so then you will come to know that okay what sort of jobs are you get will will you get later on what is the expected salary they might offer you and then also what are the other skills that they are looking at because these days people are looking more into what extra are you bringing onto the table like what are your skills whether they are presentation skills or communication skills or in interpersonal relationships so people look into what extra are you bringing onto pay onto the table so people can then develop those skills also while they are pursuing their phd then people can apply broadly so people who are flexible enough who think that okay they can apply between two or three subjects that they can apply to various colleges to various subjects then they need to make their research statement shine and their application has to stand out so there has to be a clear intent which has to be mentioned as to why they want to pursue their uh, phd under this particular professor so if someone is applying abroad this really becomes a lot of uh, important point because there there it is called as sop which is statement of purpose which is of really really importance for people in there then you need to ask the references in advance so if, if you are planning to apply abroad then you need to get your references from professors you know beforehand itself so that after completion of phd or uh, sorry after completion of your masters you can apply you know smoothly having said that uh, you are if, if you are planning to do your phd in india then uh, you need to start working or start studying for the grf which are the junior research fellowships which which will take care of the funding part that i'll talk about in the next few uh, questions at the same time if you are planning uh, to go abroad then start the application by the fourth semester so by the end of uh, your masters you should start you know applying and then get in, into that process having said that the most important point that people need to get in is patience because this process of application then getting into the phd and life after that is something that uh, requires a lot of mental preparation so patience is really really important for people who are planning to do you know phd so patience actually i have been hearing this from when i was a kid actually so patience is important in every aspect of life but after hearing you i feel it is important before doing phd during phd and after phd because yes patience will be the only quality that is going to take us through this struggle i'm calling it a struggle because i see that there's a lot to do before doing phd and there will be a lot of mental uh, you know there will be a lot of nervous breakdowns i guess during yes. doing phd also so this is very important the second important thing that i get here is that the second year of masters is a period where Uh, you know you have to do a lot of things to make sure that uh, you enter a proper field in phd yeah. you have to start taking your reference letters and you have to start looking for openings uh, so research your research well so yes. i think the second year is the make or break in the career suppose somebody doesn't do that in the second year then then still this process is valid yes the process is is is, is still valid but then uh, that adds to the time that you know uh, that you take so people if you are uh, applying with uh, people around then people might go ahead uh, with you with that you know in that race and these things so yeah means the competition might increase but it is yes. better late than being never you know so we yes. still can go along following these points if we have missed the situation yes uh, of the second year advantage but let's go to the next field now we have heard about everything ki kaise jana hai but kahan jana hai so let's see how should one select the field for doing phd okay so this is all like i said comes to their uh, interest so people uh, sometimes uh, try to go for applied sciences uh, for their particular uh, phd or people sometimes go for 
a broader uh, field wherein they go for the basic sciences so this is all that comes up to their interest so they need to take their time out to know which is their uh, you know uh, subject of interest next decide what kind of doctorate are you looking looking out for so what type of uh, phd work are you planning to do then you have to uh, pick a project that pairs your uh, passion with practicality because you need to be passionate about the work that you do but at the same time it should be having a practical application so this is what is important this is what you have to justify to people later on as to why did you choose this particular uh, topic and what sort of uh, you know uh, real time problem of the mankind or the society or the environment are you trying to solve by doing your this uh, this work that you have done then you need to uh, try before you buy like for example if you can take up a job in an industry of your interest so you get an you know idea about whether should you be further continuing in in that subject so you'll get a feel of that industry and then later on you can get uh get going with your phd so a small internship sort of a thing can help you to judge your future life beforehand then uh think about your research environment so you need to look into whether are there uh the required infrastructure in place in your uh in in your place where you are planning to do your phd then you need to talk to your potential supervisor this is really important these days so you can talk to your professors your mentors your guides wh- whomever you think can help you with 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 such informations and then uh you need to think about your future so you need to look into what next uh, will you be planning to do so not just stop at the phd but then what next are you planning to do after so considering all these points you need to select your subject so basically uh, i've been understanding that we have to you know communicate a lot research a lot and uh, try and meet a lot of people uh, read in between the lines what they are not telling that also we have to understand what they are telling this is also to be understood uh, but this brings to a very important quality after patients that one has to communicate properly because most of us would not be able to i think because when i was also a uh, i was an undergraduate then i became a post graduate so in the years of studies that even i did you know this doesn't come naturally to one mm-hmm. we cannot communicate properly we cannot uh, uh, you know take advantage of our surroundings or we do not network well so now okay now i have reached the level where you know i can talk to people i am active on linkedin and i go and ask questions to people but starting mein aisa lagta na ha main puchungi ya puchunga to kaise karega so matlab is there any thing like uh, people do tell you know uh, take a break from your studies and uh, uh, you know think about what you need to do or network or uh, do a job maybe that will help you to polish yourself because when once you are out of the college you know it's a totally different environment that you are in that yes. you understand you know you're yes. not the frog in the well you are yes. just outside and you know <laughs> the world is yours and you have to conquer it so this brings me to the next question is it a good idea to take a break from studies and do a job for a few months or a year over here i want to mention one point mm-hmm. i put a poll on instagram and uh, mm-hmm. to my surprise 75% mm-hmm. of the people accepted mm-hmm. that it's a good idea to take a break from the job yes so i want your opinions on it yes uh, uh to answer your question uh, like uh, these days people are are outspoken they are you know a uh, bit open in terms of the communication whereas in our days we were in because at times this is related to the culture and the upbringing that we have been like you know we have been uh, brought up as so this is something that really affects at times but then w- what people can do is people can have their groups their friends and uh, you know this is how they can develop their communication skills uh, because uh, i i remember that during our our college days we used to be given an outside uh, syllabus topic and we were told to research and then present to the a- entire class so this way we helped yeah this helped us to go beyond the books then second thing is that uh, people in their vacation periods they can go to the small internships at 
various places that they want to because i remember that during our graduation days we have done uh, internships at some diagnostic lab at some food manufacturing plant at some university research lab so you know as you go on doing such small small you know two to three weeks ka training or internships you get more ideas that what more is there beyond what you are learning and second thing that whatever you are studying what real life application it has in the market so once you see that you understand that ha matlab mai jo pad raha hu uska kahin na kahin kuch to use hai actually in the market so this will you know build up your confidence and then to answer the question about is it useful to take a break after studies yes because i even i agreed uh, to the same because even i have done the same wherein after my masters i took a break uh, now understood what subjects what what drives me and then accordingly then i started with my phd so yes it is uh, important people have to take jobs at times because of their personal circumstances but then this will uh, really help them to understand as to what is in in them what are they apt for so means they might go for say a phd later on then they might understand that no phd is not for them they might go for an mba these days people after doing their msc people are going for an llb also because uh, people are understanding the needs of uh, patents trademarks iprs all of these things so this really helps you to understand you know what is your interest third important thing is uh, your financial situation will become more secure so once you work you get some money and then you can fund your own uh, studies af- after that so because of this you will get that f- the financial cushion and then this will help you to understand whether you are really apt for further studies or should you be continuing with the job so this gives you a lot of self realization things in this way. basically it's the time you buy to introspect yourself and yes. where do you stand and what is the market how is the current situation yes. uh, how do you want to go ahead of your uh, colleagues and uh, have yes. put it the time to your advantage so basically it helps the yes. i was in the opinion of you know you should not this was my opinion when those days you know when people used to say that uh, it's in the flow that you study and it's not uh, good to break your studies and yes. you are there you study once you break yes. and you go in the job then you feel ki nahi ab ye position pe hai you're getting mm-hmm. this much salary then you'll go to the next yes. position you'll get this much salary now you'll break and then it means do not break just go on with the flow but now yes. i'm understanding that it's to our advantage and the current scenario is also like this so yes. just make the use of networking if you are taking up a job yes an internship is a good idea that you have told yeah there are many hospitals also giving internships to people so yes this brings us to the next question is there any difference in pursuing phd in india versus any other country i see many people many students going out and doing phd so what is your opinion on this uh there are uh, there are around six points that you know clearly differentiate uh, a phd in india uh, versus a phd abroad so uh, first thing is uh, the the type of mentors because there is a different degree of determination will power and motivation that people have or the research guides they have at the same time uh, the degree of cutting edge research or serious research that they do at these two different places is different then uh, the second important point is mentor to student ratio so what happens at times people they recruit around dozen students but then because of this they spare less time or they pay less uh, attention to students when they fail in their experiments so so they cannot focus on them pretty well third is the facilities that this is the most important point because when we talk about uh, the sophisticated uh, instruments or the type of facilities which is required for research is really different when you compare it to india and abroad but then having said that in india also there are very uh, good places like uh, iits csir institutes which do have uh, such facilities but then we need to have some more of them fourth is the funding when i say about funding this is about the percent gdp of uh, the country which is going into the research and development so at the same time also the research output so that is different between 
the two places then scholarships so uh, scholarship is something which is available for people who want to go abroad so no doubt the fees is on the higher side but then yes if they qualify for the scholarships then they do get that financial support so they they save after their food their hostel their travel and their institute fees as well so that the last point is the working conditions so people who study abroad they are more open minded they are more curious and they are better organized but then uh, having said that people at times do prefer india because this is their home some uh, sometimes people they do not want to stay away from their family they want to close be close to their family their home and then this is where they they prefer studying then the food conditions because uh, people sometimes they like a typical type of food then they 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 do not want to go abroad of their food conditions then in india at times you get options to uh, do uh, your phd part time as well as full time these options are also available so you can p- work and then you can do your uh, um, phd but then this option is not uh, so available when you go abroad then uh, the funding situation and research quality at uh, uh, the institutes which are funded by say csir or ugc or dst or I- icmrs even iits is improving so this is the reason why that people then uh, tend to stay in india as well so these are the you know points because of which people either they go abroad or they stay back in india so basically i feel you know it is completely a personal choice though there are advantages there might be advantages that we would come to in our next question but it's a completely a personal choice that where does one want to do phd if one True. does not have so much of resources and has to work and has to do other things so part time phd looks a good option yes that one can do in india so this brings us to our next uh, question which countries should be preferred to do phd okay now uh, there are wide uh, options available for for this question but then uh, if we have to select a few then uh, those uh, those can be canada us uh, uk germany and australia these these five options uh so this all depends upon the field of interest that people want to uh, pursue so for example someone wants to uh, go for information technology then it is uh, say better in us people who want to do it in biological sciences then it is europe so this is how uh, that's a nice place for people to do biological research then there are other uh, pros and cons uh, that each of these countries have so if we talk about uh, us then the american universities they provide the top education so they are the world best and they are a perfect blend of academics with research and extracurricular activity they have a very high student satisfaction rate thanks to the numerous student services that they provide then uh, they provide uh, numerous scholarships as well so students can apply uh, for merit based or need based scholarships and then uh, they can uh, do some voluntary work as well and uh, last but not the least they are worldwide re- recognized because the higher education in us is known to prepare talented profession uh, professionals that are highly skilled and company uh, see them as a candidate with international mindset and as a problem solver as well then uh, if we come down to canada then canada the advantage is that it's an english speaking country next uh, the quality of life is high there so people can uh, stay there the it's really safe out there then it's a cosmopolitan environment so people uh, from uh, different cultures and uh, diversity they stay there then if we talk about germany then again in germany people get many scholarships for in- in- international students and it's a good place for people who want to do extensive research at the same time there is a wide network of partnerships with local and international uh, research students which is available there and they provide modern research facilities and laboratories then uh, if we come to australia then australia is one of the safest countries uh, at the same time it is also popular among uh, international students again it is multicultural and people are really f- friendly out there so people feel welcomed and uh, there are great opportunities for work during studies as well as after graduation 
so then uh, people uh, the in, the international students in australia can work up to 20 hours a week and after graduation they can also benefit from a post study work visa so like i said that these countries have their own uh, pros as well as the cons so these are the five important countries so basically one can choose you know one month to work in india uh, sorry study in india germany united kingdoms usa canada and australia so there is a yeah. lot to choose from personally i would choose australia because uh, the crime rate is less and uh, one can work also over there afterwards also so and it's a, a cultural you know bio uh, not biodiversity too much into biochemistry culture diversity yeah culture yeah. diversity <laughs> the cultural diversity is nice one can work there one can study there so it's it's a good option i think and crime rate yes. is less so i feel aur khane ka main bolna chahti hu food food you know uh, i have studied my entire life in maharashtra india so okay. i'm from mumbai i i studied in mumbai then i went to nagpur then i again came back to mm-hmm. mumbai so mm-hmm. the thing is that uh, food you know state state mein bhi badal jata hai so khane yes. ka to aise hi either you learn learn how to cook food or otherwise you accept whatever food you get food get so, yes within the state also i think within uh, within the um, within the city itself within the town itself the taste of the food changes so better yes. everybody learns to cook the food themselves so that should not be a, a criteria which should restrict our ourselves we should one should, it should not restrict one so right. let's go to the next question any message for the students who are willing to pursue the phd in any other country than our that is india okay so here i will uh, take example of uh, two big uh, big ones one is uh, europe and uh, usa so if someone is doing a phd from uh, say europe then it is recognized across all the ehea countries so they are uh, the european higher education areas which include uh, the 20 eu members and then uh, they are uh, considered by all the universities and employers in all european countries and then the time which is required uh, is less so if if you, uh, you consider countries like uh, norway germany france or even uk it's it's around 3 years and compared to 6 years in us and then 5 years in india then uh, the tuition fees is also uh, lower in uh, uk at the same time uh, the cons are there like the masters degree is mandatory uh, for people who pursue their uh, you know phd there and there is a lower pr- uh, privilege to uh, to do teaching out there the teaching opportunities are lower then coming to uh, us then there is prospect of uh, having teaching experience so you take an undergraduate lectures as teaching assistant that remains a part of the phd curriculum as it is one of the clauses in the funding package managing tutorials or contributing in preparing the exam papers to sustain to be a part of the course teaching assistant most uh, phd students are expected uh, to e- effectuate a semester for one class for a duration of around 2 to 3 years then because of this teaching uh, you draw some extra funds so although the tuition fees are high for uh, private american universities or even the public universities uh, the extra economic aid which they grab in the form of five year funding packages including tuition fee and monthly stipend so that really helps them then some universities also offer individual fellowship programs to fund phd's apart from those offered at the state or at the national level then teaching may also support students financially by providing teaching assistantship partially covering the tuition fee then uh, the time concern uh, so when you talk about phd in america this uh, takes as long as say around 6 to 8 to maybe 10 years at a time at the same time yeah so the phd cost is also a bit high then the topic of thesis uh, get finalized in the third or the fourth year of uh, your doctoral uh, research and then passing the qualifying exams become really really mandatory out there so all of these then completing the coursework and qualifying exam uh, they provide you know, a steering wheel to the phd main course dissertation work so yes but at the same time this teaching exposure the skills that you develop your presentation skills your communication skills they really improve because of this extra work that you do 
and uh, people uh, normally you know uh, learn more when they teach yeah so so that really really help so if you want to uh, make someone learn then tell them to teach so they they learn it in a in a in, in the best way because they know that they have to teach someone else so this is how it all goes this is the, this you know this is coming directly from an experienced person he learned and he taught as well so yeah yes. so in the break period you know he was taking tuitions so this is the way you know unke soft skills bhi acche ho gaye communication skills bhi acche ho gaye and he took this to advantage he learned himself by teaching others so yes, yes that's a good advantage but still you know i oh, got very scared with the thought of that it might take 6 years or 8 years or even 10 years it's a long long, long process long long yes that all all depends on the subject and the type of work that they are trying to do so all of this affects the entire uh, time period so basically in us it can take 6 years 8 years or 10 years uh it it may vary between maybe. these these ones may uh, may vary but in uh, india uh in india uh like you know it takes around 4 to 5 years at least at least 4 to 5 years so at least is the term of year at least it can yes take- now if if yes like for example if we specifically then speak about mumbai universities then uh people can submit their uh, thesis after 22 months of their registration so minimum 22 months is something that they have to dedicate and uh, after their registration with the university after this time period then they can submit their uh, thesis and then after that their yy is kept and then you know all the other procedures may follow but then it it as well goes beyond 4 uh, to 5 years at times yeah and i have a colleague of mine who has been doing phd so i also uh, know this that it varies depending upon an individual because Uh, of her personal situations or whatever the things are there in anyone's personal life, whatever they go through, I think the term increases due to that also. So she yes. has been doing it for almost like she's been into the process for almost like eight to nine years. She's been doing PhD in India, but still going on with okay. it. So I think you know it varies on the country, varies on the yes. subject, and individual variations are there too. Yes. So we finish with the part one of our uh, two episode program or two episode interview on this. So if you have any queries, you can write us to write to us in the comment box, and we will solve your queries or those queries in our next session also. And uh, thanks a lot, a very big thank you, Dr. Ritesh Oja. because in these things i must tell you these times when we could not meet each other generally if you see my previous videos i generally meet the person and we sit together and we do the interview right. but this by far is the best interview that i have taken because <laughs> he has taken lot of efforts where i failed to t- to take the effort because you know in these times you do not uh, you're not very willing to do something new but he was he always cooperated and he told no we can do on this platform we can do on this platform and really i must tell you we have tried to do this for many times and finally this is a successful attempt that we have today so a very yes. big thank you and uh, the so i element over here in this episode is that we give you the link to the ppt where dr ritesh has mentioned all the points so that you can go back and see the link to the uh, uh, ppt see the presentation because this will clear more of your doubts and the second thing is there will be a direct link given to his linkedin profile and you can go and see his linkedin profile and you can directly ask questions to him as well but we have with him with us so do not worry if you cannot ask him direct questions you post the questions in the comment box and we will get the queries solved so wait for the next episode to come and do not forget to subscribe the channel till then have a good day stay safe sanitize your hands maintain social distance and wear the mask we are not wearing because we are not together okay so yeah. thank you dr ritesh it was uh, thank you dr ritesh yes uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity and uh, for you know allowing me to share my experiences 
and uh, knowledge with people uh, once again a very big thank you to you for giving me this uh, this platform to interact or to to share these things thanks a lot thank you so much bye, bye.